Hi, this is a video describing how to solve quadratic equations when a is not equal to zero. Now, when a is not equal to zero, uh, we can't just factor by finding numbers that multiply to the last term and add to the second term. Rather, there's one extra step that we have to do at the very beginning, uh, and then a couple of extra steps at the end in order to properly factor this. So step one in factoring, when the a term is not equal to zero, or the coefficient on the x squared, uh, is to take your a value, so in this case your first term right here, and multiply it by your c value, so that's your constant term at the end. So here, when I multiply three and six, I end up with 18. Now what do I do with this 18? Well, what I have to do with it is I have to find the factors of 18, so that's numbers that multiply to 18, and add to my second term. So they need to add to the b value and multiply to the product of a times c. So 18, uh, if we start thinking about its factors, uh, we could start with maybe 6 and 3. Uh, if I have 6 and 3, that's not going to add to 11. So I go on to another one, and maybe I try 9 and 2. Well, we do find that 9 times 2 is, in fact, going to add to 11. Uh, and if it's negative 9 and negative 2, it will add to negative 11. All right, so that's uh, step 1 and step 2. So now that I know that the factors that I'm interested in are this negative 9 and this negative 2, what you have to do is split this middle term into negative 9x and negative 2x. So the way that we do that is we write our original first term, this 3x squared, still as 3x squared. And then when we come to this b value, this negative 11x, I'm going to split it into minus 9x in minus 2x, the two factors that we took from the previous problem. And we're simply going to add 6 at the end. Now, the next thing we have to do is factor by grouping. In order to factor by grouping, you want to put parentheses around the left two terms and parentheses around the right two terms. And you want to take out the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is the greatest number and or variable that goes into each term within the parentheses. So if I look at the first terms here, uh, the greatest factor of 3 and 9 is 3. So I can take a 3 out. The greatest factor of x squared and x is just x. So I can take an x out here. Now if I take a 3x out of 3x squared, I'm left with x. And if I take a 3x out of negative 9x, I'm left with negative 3. Now I do the same thing for the right term. For negative 2 and 6, I can take a negative 2 out. The reason it's a negative 2 is because that's going to leave me with x minus 3. And I'm just going to point something out here that this and this are the exact same they need to be. And that's why I had to do negative 2 instead of positive 2, so that both terms left inside of the parentheses would be x minus 3. Now, what you do at the end is you bring this value and this value together, and you put them in parentheses. So since it's a 3x and there's a negative 2, we're going to factor out a 3x minus 2. And then the x minus 3 and the x minus 3 come together as a single x minus 3. So just to reiterate, step 1 was we found the product of a times c. Step 2, find factors. of AC that add to B. Step three, uh, after we do that, we split B 
E term. We take the greatest common factor and then we finally write it out in factored form to have our final answer. So let's go ahead and follow those steps as we do this next problem right here. 4x squared minus x plus 5, a times c would be 4 times 5, which is 20. We then want to find the factors of a times c that add to b. In this case, our b value is negative 1, so we want to find the factors of 20 that add to negative 1. So there's 1 and there's 20, that doesn't add to 1. There's 4 and there's 5, that doesn't work. 2 and 10, none of these are going to work. Uh, and the reason none of these are going to work is uh, in order to multiply to positive 20, both numbers have to be positive or both numbers have to be negative. Uh, and since that's not going to work in this case, I'm actually going to change the problem slightly so that it is one that will work. If I make this a minus 5, then a times c would have to be negative 20. Uh, now, one of the numbers here could be positive and the other number could be negative. So that's going to allow 4 and 5 to work because 5 can be negative and 4 can be positive because negative 5 times positive 4 both multiplies to negative 20 but also adds to negative 1. So then I'm going to split this middle term up into minus 5x and plus 4x. I'm then going to put parentheses around both of these terms. Out of this first term, I can only take an x, so this becomes x. What's left is 4x minus 5. And out of this term, I can only take a 1, left with 4x minus 5. And then the final factored form would be x plus 1, bringing this term and this term together, and 4x minus 5. And if you wanted to solve it all the way, you would find x is equal to negative 1. Mistake there. You would find x is equal to negative 1, or x is equal to 4 fifths. And that's how you solve quadratic equations when your a value is not equal to 1.